Greetings. I'd like to continue this uh, talk about money and uh, got a couple of questions, comments from people on the uh, prior version, which had some, uh, for some reason it didn't edit properly. I had to repost it. But uh, anyway, we take money for granted as a, uh, it's largely sort of invisible and, you know, absolutely necessary component of our lives our civilization and so on and uh, it's not really accurate because there are plenty of uh, peoples who uh, did not have money did not use money and uh, what happens when you put when you use money basically is that uh, the money always comes first because uh, without it you can't eat you can't survive you can't uh, you can't survive basically so we take it for granted that uh, that's the way things are but um, when you look around at the like say for example here power lines now I'm not on a road at the moment but uh, we look at these is like oh well this is transmitting energy you know and the uh, roads or transportation people travel along the roads electricity travels along the wires and i would say no essentially it's not because just as currency itself can be a substitute for something else just as in the earliest days of uh, the growth of agriculture and separation of uh, jobs you know into whatever uh, masonry or woodwork or uh, farming, things like that, then uh, the farmer might need, you know, sh shoes for the horse, so he would have to go to the metal worker and uh, either trade things or, but then that person might not need the farm produce, so that's kind of where uh, the currency came in. But getting back to electricity, roads, things like that, the electricity is money it's sold and created by money roads also are not about helping anything it's about making you drive making you buy a car and making you buy gasoline so most towns and cities for example these days they're basically designed so that you can't walk to get what you need to live you have to drive you have to subscribe to the system and this is no accident that things were designed this way it's no coincidence that uh you know grocery stores shopping malls things like that were put out on the perimeters of towns and villages not in in you know on main street so there again, that's another example of basically money taking away your legs, taking away your ability to walk places, having a tremendously detrimental effect on human health. Now, when money looks at, and it might sound like I'm describing money as a conscious entity, uh, in a way it is, in a way it isn't, but it certainly has an interest. What we're seeing now, for example, we're seeing tremendous uh, amounts of property uh, being bought, uh, turned into rental properties, uh, prices of things are going up, prices of living are going up, buying a house is more difficult. I've been looking for a house for 10 months. They all vanished at the last minute. And you could say, well, it's not BlackRock doing it. Well, it's someone else buying it and then selling a bunch of them to BlackRock. So it's the largest mountain of money at the top manipulating what's going on below for profit. So not only is food, water, electricity, housing, um, a marketplace, marketplaces basically for exploitation now it's become 
we've come to a state, a place where it is also your body. So the body is now your body, it should be yours. But no, it's, there are attempts, well, I shouldn't have to explain this in any depth, but what's happened is that it's being seen as a, an environment, a, a, a potential profit a resource ha, uh, for you know health reasons. So, uh, and this is people with you know money who have decided that this is a legitimate perspective. So, at this point, about the only thing that uh, hasn't been exploited and sold to us is the air that we're breathing. So, so far, you know, we don't have to pay for air. But uh, that's not to say that, uh, you know, in the far distant future, people might have to live underground because the surface is so messed up. And then, yeah, we would have to pay for the air. So, anyway, uh, people might think, oh, well, Hoffman's crazy, and the thing about these systems, what is he, a socialist or communist, or, or you know, is he promoting uh, primitive ways of life and things like that? And um, the thing about money is that, uh, you know, just like the Beatles song, Can't Buy Me Love. So... It can't, but with people, because we are all in competition to survive in this economic landscape, it tends to make love, cooperation, compassion, um, invisible, obsolete. So, um, just as I've mentioned before with, uh, subtraction revealing invisible solutions if something vanishes tomorrow then ways will be found to work around it so if cars vanish tomorrow things would be restructured there would be a transition period it might be difficult but afterwards things would be a hell of a lot better guarantee you in writing so anyway with uh money what if that happened see the thing about money is that in the beginning it was more innocent that it was on a smaller scale you know hundreds of years ago uh it wasn't such a big deal you know but what's happened is that the money monsters these vampires basically have grown and grown and grown and now they're gigantic and they're hovering over the world manipulating everything for their own interest which is profit so it's crazy because the universe itself doesn't need money. The sun doesn't need money. Aliens coming here don't need money. Animals don't need money. Plants don't need money. Seasons don't need financing or budgets. Um, we're the only ones that have created this crazy asinine system, which is damaging us extremely and when you look at all the layers the levels of how the damage is being done societally individually psychologically physically um that's what it's all due to so even the things that are being sold to us you say oh well entertainment's a wonderful thing because it makes me happy after i worked my shitty job all day you know and I like movies or comic books or sports or whatever, something like that. And it's like, you know what? If you had a life that wasn't based on economics, you'd be doing all that stuff yourself. You'd be playing tennis or doing sports or creating art or writing a book or making whatever. You would be doing that stuff rather than paying someone else to do it because you're too exhausted because you've been working, you know, all the time. And that's another bit of propaganda, the uh, work ethic, you know, work hard. It's like that is what our nation is about, hard work. Well, I can tell you about hard work because I've worked uh, pretty darn hard 
Um, over the years, there were times when I got uh, continuous constant headaches because of the tremendous concentration all day long, every day, you know, uh, working what? 16, 15, 16 hours a day, things like that to produce all this crap uh, that I've done. So anyway, um, money is like a vampire. And basically it makes promises that it's going to care and it's going to take care of you and you don't have anything to worry about. You know, so you make a nice couple. And then at night, you go to bed, you turn the lights out, you go to sleep, and a vampire starts sucking on your neck, sucking your blood out. You know, you wake up the next morning, it's like, oh, here's another day. I feel kind of exhausted and I gotta work hard and go through the whole process again. And a vampire saying, oh, we love you. We love you. And it's funny, on the way over here, I saw a truck, Harris Teeter grocery, uh, you know, supply truck. And their new slogan is something about, I think it's the food of love. Yeah, the food of love. And it's got some berries, you know, blackberries and cherries and strawberries and things like that scattered about. It's like, really? So the vampire is gonna take love itself and use it as propaganda. And put these berries on there, which are nature, use that too. Now they're not telling you up front that these berries are coated in poison. Oh no, they don't do that. Just like uh, Kroger. Kroger's slogan is fresh, you know, it's all fresh. Yeah, freshly coated in poison. All the food is toxic because that's the most profitable way to do things. Processed food, Industrial farming, pesticides, herbicides, all that stuff, plastics. We're all paying the price for it. So, you know, uh, in some ways there are people who want to sort of restore a balance. Uh, you know, don't do away with money, but tax the rich. And, uh, you know, help the middle class, the working class. Why should there even be a middle class? You know, so I don't really necessarily feel that uh, this will be fixed anytime soon. I don't feel that talking about it is necessarily a bad thing. If people can realize, you know, that uh, a lot of the things that they're doing are supporting this whole crazy system and they may not realize that that's what they're doing. So uh, just like the electricity, the driving, things like that, it's supposed to be for your comfort, but ultimately what happens is it weakens you, weakens your resilience to temperature changes, uh, weakens your legs because you're not walking, uh, which I've said before. So anyway, uh, it's a big mess, but uh, I'm thinking through a lot of this right now because it's, it seems to be the major effect currently on our society and on pretty much everyone that I know. So you might, for example, find some people who are billionaires, you know, and it's like, oh, well, they're fine. They're not worried. And it's like, no, they're worried. <laughs> they're really worried because once they signed up to be a vampire, it's like you can never drink enough and they're worried they might lose a little bit or that someone else might take some power away from them. So that's crazy too. And unfortunately what happens is like everyone, well, not everyone, but most people are prejudiced to some degree in that they think that their position is correct. They think that they have a view of the world, which is the most accurate. And uh, you know, it might be something completely crazy. I don't know, NRA, Satan worship, whatever. Some, something, but um, the people with, basically what, what I'm getting at is that if say for example, tomorrow you had a hundred billion dollars, well, you'd be in charge. And whatever it is that you thought was the right way to see things, you would begin to enforce that. So for example, Bill Gates made his money with 
code and little circuits and things like that. It's like, oh, well, hmm, okay, now I'm at the top of the pile. I'm looking out at the world. Hmm, there are people out there, there are bodies. Oh, there are bodies. The biology is like codes and circuits. So we're gonna explore that for profit. We're going to create, you know, these drugs, buddy up with pharma, uh, and so on, and the V word, and um, take it from there. Well, it's incredibly, not just biased, but limited, incredibly limited view of the universe, of us, everything. So, anyway, um, I'm open to suggestions, really. And I'm at the end of the walk here, so I'm gonna can it. And I'm gonna, you know, get in the car and drive home. See you later.